This tutorial is going to cover how to create a spread in InDesign and uh, create a layout that you can add images into and text. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some formatting and, and fonts and um, some key um, uh, user interface aspects of InDesign. So in opening InDesign, um, you get this uh, first kind of splash page. Uh, for our students, we're going to be accessing InDesign via a porto. So if you double click on this folder, you'll see InDesign here. Um, otherwise, you're, you're welcome to download InDesign as students and open it uh, on your desktop. So if you create a new file, uh, it'll take you to this screen. Um, we can set this to inches to see what the, the size of the page is going to be. Um, by default, it's set to 8.5 by 11. I'm going to set this to portrait. You can change it to landscape. Um, and it's giving us a preview because I have that uh, checked here. So it'll give us a preview of what that page is going to look like. You can set it uh, as many pages as you like. Um, I have this set to two columns, so it's dividing the space, the page in half. Um, I'm going to leave that. And you can change the size of margins if you want this to be a little bit tighter. Um, you can update that. If you want to unbreak this, we can make these, we can change these uh, uniformly when that's linked. And you can see how that updates here. That's the bleed. And you can affect uh, other margins as well here. Slug. Um, I'm just going to hit create. This is set to one page. And so opening it up in design, um, I like to work in Essentials Classic. So I think the default is Essentials like that. I like to click set this to Essentials Classic. Um, I like to dock pages, character, paragraph, and if there's something that you don't see or you want to include, um, you can just go to Windows. A lot of the text is under here, Type and Tables. You can add character, paragraph. Um, I have pages. So Clicking on these uh, layers could be another one that you add. So, and you can customize uh, the docking of each of these. You can expand them. Um, so just like Photoshop and Illustrator, there are layers that you can work with. If you want to hide text, you can put that on one layer and images on another. Um, pages are here at the top. And so, Adding pages is easy. You just click on this new page. Um, you can duplicate pages. You can edit the page size, delete pages, all over there under the page tab. Um, so InDesign, similar interface to Illustrator and Photoshop. Um, you can pan by holding the um, space bar and the left clicking and dragging. So this will get you panning, um, holding Alt and using the scroll wheel will zoom in and out. And delete this second page. And just using the scroll wheel will scroll up and down, holding Control and using the scroll wheel will uh, pan left and right, or scroll left and right. So to zoom in on this, we want to create a spread where we have images and text. So with text, you can just create the type tool, um, click and drag to create a text box. And I'm going to snap this to the guides that we set up when we created the project. So if this is where I want my text to be, um, I have an example of kind of what we want this, in this case, a speaker report, where we um, hear from a speaker, create a little template, um, 
write up on that. So I'm going to use this as the example. Um, we're going to have text here. We're going to have an image that fills the bottom and we're going to go full bleed with that image. So it'll go right to the edge and we're going to have a headline here and our name at the top right and image here. So with the text box, again, we just created this type tool. T is the shortcut. Clicking on that, um, we can right click and we can add um, some type to this. We can just have this kind of autofill uh, with text. So if you double click on it and right click, you can see fill with placeholder text as an option. And that's just going to fill it with kind of generic text that you can fill in later. Uh, and as you increase the size of that, it's not going to update. So you'll want to right click again, fill with placeholder text as needed. You'll notice the functionality of these text boxes. So I just cropped this and you'll notice that there's a red plus that appeared here. That means the rest of that text is still being remembered by the program. It's just ac accessible here. So if I click on that, I can now click and it's going to paste the rest of the text that was cropped. So if I am creating a magazine article and I want to put an image here and continue the text below it, that's a strategy that I can use to continue. So again, I can crop this. Now the red plus appears, click on that, and it'll fill in the rest of the text somewhere else as its own text box. So that's a handy um, little tidbit there. So I'm gonna delete this, fill this back. And I wanna put an image in the bottom of this. So I'm gonna use the image place. So using this rectangular frame tool, and the keyboard shortcut is F. So I'm going to grab the corner, come up to here, and I want to place an image here. So I can select this and hit Control D, and I can find an image that I like. Here I'm going to find a model photo, and you'll notice that it drops the image into that frame. Um, and by default, you know, it's, the image is going to come in at its real size. Notice I clicked on this white arrow, clicking on the image. It shows me in brown the original image size. And so I can use uh, I shift and control and I can scale the image within that crop box or within that frame. Um, or the alternative is to select the image, right click it, and go to fitting. I can say fit frame proportionally, and it'll crop the image to the frame, keeping it proportional to the original image. So then I can just move it. If I hold uh, shift, when I click and drag, I can keep it uh, aligned. So I can move it that way. Um, the alternative is to right click fitting fit content proportionally so then it'll um, basically make sure that the entire uh, image is maintained within this crop region or within the frame okay so i'm going to go back to fit frame proportionally and using the white arrow move this holding shift up I can use the arrow keys to move it incrementally and click to get out of that. So I've dropped an image and you know, this isn't, there's, there's better designs, better uh, layouts, but this is just an example. Um, so adding text, click, drag, I can then give this a name. So I'm going to say guest speaker and write you know the name as an example and with that text 
Um, I can go under character and you can manipulate the font. You can change the scale of it uh, vertically, horizontally. Um, other things you can you can shift in the uh, in the text. So I'm going to select the text, set this um, to PF DIN. So there's different options here. I'm just going to go medium, and I'm going to set the size to 18. You'll notice it's cropping his last name, so. I can either click on that or I could just use this to expand that out and get the full name. You know, a lot of graphics is about alignment and using white space. So using margins, making sure things align will go a long way in your graphics. So it's not necessarily about, you know, the most exciting graphics. It's more just about using white space effectively and creating um, just compelling, you know, simplicity using uh, text boxes and images, things that align. So I'm going to put that there, you know, a quote. I'm going to copy this from the other document and just paste that in. Um, for this, I'm going to select that, set this to Lado. And going to decrease that size. Okay, so here we've pasted in this quote. Uh, I'm going to retype this so we can demonstrate something. So I'm going to say practicing, and I'm going to have caps turned on, so I'm going to uncheck caps lock. Practicing. So with that, you'll notice that um, there's a capitalization here. Um, I can set this, if I hit Control A, I can set this to all caps here. Or if I want to go back to small caps, I can change it there. So that's under character. There's a little hamburger menu. And you can change the um, capitalization there. So that's something to keep in mind. Often in architecture, we like to use all caps for various titles and drawing text annotations. Uh, when it comes to reports and graphics, though, it makes sense to use regular uh, lowercase. So here we have the guest speaker. I'm going to increase the size of this. This is set to hairline. That's too thin. I'm just going to go Lato light and set this size to 14. Well, maybe we'll bring that back down to 12. So we have a name, we have a quote, some text. And if you want to see a preview of what this will look like, um, just hit W and it'll give you kind of the print preview. Hit W again and it'll take you back to the editing view. So I can select this text. Um, if I want to create a new text box, go back to this. I'm going to create uh, a text box for the name, date, and uh, class info. So say Jane Kim Arc A110 and today's date. So once again, I can select this, set the uh, font that I want, Lado light. And again, we want to align things. So I'm going to set this to align with the text below. And with this, I'm also going to set this to Lato light. Okay, so in, in design, we like to use um, minimal fonts, sans serif, so without um, a lot of uh, ornamentation. 
So that's just something to keep in mind in the design world, minimal, if you're keeping to a kind of a minimal look, it makes sense to have a font that follows that as well. And I've left justified this. If I wanna justify this on the right side, I can pull this to the right and then under paragraph, right justify it. Okay, so preview of what that would look like. And often in graphics, you, you may want to have, you know, this be a strong edge here too. So there's the option to do that here. It adds some spaces to the text, which some people don't like, but graphically it makes things align a lot better. So going back to this, I want to add another image here and add some key points down here. So I can select this, I can hold Alt and duplicate it in this case, or I could also create a new text box. Um, so here I'm gonna create a text box where I'm gonna have some key points. So I'm gonna say Control A, Delete, and I'm gonna write, and this will be all caps. And this will also be left justify. So I'm gonna say, key points colon uh, we'll say form follows function architecture okay and so I want to create bullet points here. So I can go to um, type bulleted and numbered list, apply bullets, and it'll apply bullet points to those. And add a space here. If I wanna make this bold, I can select it and set the font to Lato bold. If I wanna go even heavier, black can work. And again, W if you want to see a preview. Just looking at this, you know, you notice the spacing here. There's more space below it than above it. So I can move this down, give everything a little bit of breathing room. And I'm noticing there, let's see, yeah, I guess that's just a graphics thing. Um, so I've added some key points. I have a quote, some generic text. And again, think about alignment. Think about ways that you can format this to be as clean and minimal as possible. And I'm going to add another rectangular frame. Drop this in. Um, selecting that. And there's a few ways that we can drag and drop images. We can select this and I can hit control D and load an image that way. Or I could just drag and drop an image from my desktop. So in this case, I'm gonna drag this series of sketches in. And again, you select it and the image is massive. So I'm gonna simply right click fitting and say uh, fill frame proportionally. So it's gonna fit it within the frame and proportional to the image. So again, a preview, hit W, and it'll give me a preview of the layout. And this is what we're looking for. Um, so full bleed at the bottom, kind of floating image on the left. And again, feel free to customize this, create your own layouts, but uh, this is a, a workflow that has worked for me and, and uh, got me through architecture school and uh, into the practice.